Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today is July 9th. This is my community plot, my community garden. And I'm just going to give you a tour of my garden right now and also the rest of the community garden and just show you what's growing. I also want to talk about insect dust, cucumber beetles, and a little bit about spraying. And then I'll just clean this up a little bit and give you a tour of the garden. It's early morning and I want to show you, and I've talked about how I do this, this is insect dust. It's on my squash and zucchini and in my community garden, if I didn't use it, my plants would be devastated. That's just the way it is. So as a gardener, you want to use all the different tools that are available to you, be it organic chemical or human-made chemicals. Remember, everything in the world is a chemical and use them wisely, use them respectfully. Cucumber beetles, that's a cucumber beetle, dead right there. That's a cucumber beetle dead right at the end of my fingertip. And if I go over all of my squash and zucchini I will find dozens of those. There's another one down there. That's an insect that causes damages on your cucumbers, your squash, your zucchini. And the way I take care of it is dropping dust on the outer leaves in the evening after the pollinators are gone and then I come back in the morning and I clean it off. And this is a great way to use a chemical dust. Now all chemical or all insect dusts are chemical. If it's organic it's still a chemical. If it's human made it's still a chemical and they indiscriminately kill. No matter what it is as an insect dust it kills. I just want you to understand that. If you throw organic dust over here it's killing the good and the bad. So by putting on the dust in the evening after the pollinators go away and coming in and just washing it off in the morning you reduce the risk of harming good insects. And you could see just in this one plant, in that one little bit of an area, I've killed off three cucumber beetles. And if I've killed three there, I've killed dozens off. And then I'm gonna go through all of my plants and just wash them down. Let me clean those up now before the pollinators come and I'll finish off the tour here, show you what's going on in the community garden and we'll talk about sprays too. Here's more squash and zucchini and I wanted to show you the kale. Remember in the last video, this kale was all devastated by the green cabbage looper. So I cut it down to, you know, just a little bit of the stem and all the leaves have come back and I've been taking care of this with uh, neem oil and it's really keeping the loopers off there. And the leaves look great, so I can harvest these today and eat those. Took care, more, uh, took care of spraying more of my squash and zucchini. All the weeds are popping in right now because we've had lots of rain. With lots of rain come not only weeds, but with Maryland Zone 7's um, climate, we start getting the humidity, the wet weather, and disease and stuff start coming in. So you can see diseases on my plant leaves of my tomatoes. The powdery mildew won't be far behind. So I'm going to spray everything down with Serenade. And I just recommend picking a product that you are comfortable with spraying on your plants to prevent uh, diseases from coming. And it's going to vary. Each garden is different. Some places you don't need sprays because you don't have to worry about fungus or powdery mildew. In my garden you do, especially in the community garden. Cherry tomato that um, I showed you pruning I think last time. Look how many tomatoes are on there. It's doing really, really well. There's some dieback going on in there, not sure why. Not a water issue because it's been raining regularly, but I'm gonna give this a spray. Pepper plants are doing really well. Look at all the peppers in there. These are just containers I have tucked back in the corner of the garden. Wanted to show you one more example of the dust. I haven't washed this off, but I've washed them off on everything else. Right here, another cucumber beetle killed off by just putting light amount of dust on the outer leaves. That's all you need to do. You don't need to smother the plant in dust. Oh look, here's another one. There's not even any dust on there. So the beetles at night crawl crawl all over the place. Let's, let me just pull that down. Crawl all over the place and they will go to the leaves where you have the dust so you don't need to cover the entire plant. Come back, wash it off. More varieties of squash and zucchini. I got melons up there. The peppers are doing really well. Lots of weeds. I'm going to weed that out. The tomato plant, let me get out of the, get my shadow out of this. The tomato plants need some staking. They're falling over. I dropped in a big post back there yesterday just to do 
some emergency uh, work here and I forgot my sledgehammer which I used to drive these big poles in which I wanted to put in here but look how big that tomato is that's why this tomato is starting to fall over is the fruits getting heavy and that's why you stake them up when they're little they look fine when there's no tomatoes on there they take care of themselves but as soon as the weight of the fruit comes your plants are going to start falling over and you want to keep them off the ground all right so I am going to talk about spraying a little bit for the squash or the zucchini first thing is about weeding I just quickly went through here took 20 or 30 minutes took off some damaged tomato leaves weeded a lot didn't necessarily get the roots but you really want to pull the weeds out weeds will hide bad insects they could even host potential diseases for your plants and they hold water and create kind of a low kind of create a what is it a microclimate a moisture microclimate because you have all these wet leaves down here and that can lead to fungus breeding better on your plants so whenever you can pull the weeds out let the sun be able to get in there dry off the soil dry the plants um, and really take care of it I just saw a chipmunk run by it distracted me and you also have space in here now for birds to drop in and start pecking off um, snails or pecking at slugs or other insects that may be harmful. When you have weeds all over the place, the birds can't see them. So for spraying, you can easily move your squash and zucchini plant. I don't know if I can do this left-handed. I don't want to pick it up, it'll break the leaves. But I moved it from this side over here to here and it exposes all the undersides of the leaves. And it's the easiest way to just get in there with your spray and spray the undersides. Really soak it down. You want to spray in the morning before the full sun comes out or in the evening, giving it enough time to dry. And then all I would do is pick it up with both hands, flip it back over this way, spray the underside, and then spray the top of the leaves. I moved this one here too, and you can see right there, a nice zuc two zucchini forming. Hopefully they got pollinated. If you ever see your zucchini, they look just like that. They're growing well for a while, then they brown tip and rot off. That's me. That's not a disease. That means it just wasn't pollinated. So that's how you spray the undersides of the leaves. Flip it back over. So let me get to spraying the rest of these. So let's start the exit tour from the back corner so my shadow's not in the way. A couple common sense things is don't spray plants that don't need to be sprayed. My peppers are doing really well. There's no disease coming on them, no insects either, except early in the beginning, and I've taken care of that. So don't spray unless you have to. If you're going to spray, and I, in this case I did my cucumber, squash, zucchini, tomatoes, if you have something to harvest, of course harvest it first. And try and spray, you know, a day or two after you harvest. This way the sprays are on there for a week or so before you harvest again. The peppers are doing really well in the containers that I just showed you and the ones that I planted in my neem oil container they're just they're doing outstanding I'm really really happy about it some cucumbers growing up over here and now that I weeded out a lot of this, the uh, beds I have a lot of space to bring in more plants another zucchini in there that's a tomato asparagus uh, what is that don't you hate that okra it is okra coming around this way I've got pole beans growing up here those are cantaloupes, some sort of melon, more squash and zucchini. And for my tomatoes, I'm just lifting the vines off the ground. Nothing fancy. You don't have to get, you know, specialized and be real detailed with your pruning or your staking. Just pull them up off the ground. And there's some really nice tomatoes coming in there. Like I showed you earlier, that one's huge. There's another large one in there, right there starting. And some of the smaller ones. These are all going to get to be about one pound tomatoes. So I have a nice mix of cherry, large tomatoes. Look at all these baseball-sized tomatoes that are coming in. Cucumbers in containers with the bottoms cut out. Now, one thing that's a little bit sad, and I don't know if you noticed, but I love this cherry tomato plant. It's a black cherry. It's loaded with tomatoes. I sprayed, and you saw that die off in there. And that's worrisome, because there's no yellowing. It's just dying. And when you come over here, the plant is wilting like this, and that's not really a good sign. It's not because of watering, it's not because of feeding. If you ever wonder about that, stick to a routine. If you're feeding regularly and watering regularly, something like this is going to be a disease issue, a fungal issue. Something's going on, but hopefully the plant takes care of itself. Nothing I can do for it. Pepper's doing really well. Like I said, the kale's outstanding. Squash, the zucchini, everything looks really, really good. Remember, weed when you can. Get them out of there they only cause problems for your plant and i did trim off the bad looking 
tomatoes here in my yellow brandy wine and just discard them, throw them away as soon as you can. All right, if you want to stick around, I'm going to give you a tour of the community garden and just show you what other people are doing. There's some wonderful gardens here. So again, a community plot is something your community usually does. You can always check out your local government or community association. I forget how much this is, but this space is about $25 to $45 for the year. I get free wood mulch, free water, so it's really, really worth it. I have to take care of fencing it in and taking care of everything inside and taking care of the path on the outside too. Here's my neighbor, this is their second year. They built this trellis for their squash and they're having really good success. All kinds of stuff going on. And my best advice is if you've never gardened before, just get started. You're gonna learn a lot every year, I'm still learning. Over on this side, you see a wall of green beans that actually got cut off because they were coming into our path area. And when you come around this way, you can just see all the green beans that she's growing. So you can grow a lot in a little space. Tomatoes, here's another example of a raspberry hedge. Goes all the way down. This has been here for years. It's well maintained and it's a super huge producer. Tomatoes, squash, and the gentleman over here grows these massive, like 40, 50 pound gourds on these trellising systems. And next year, or not next year, next month, there should be some massive gourds growing on there. I want to show you something that's pretty cool. That tall crop right there, I wondered what it was. It's actually hops, and I'm going to start brewing beer on my channel, just for something to do in the winter if you're interested in that. But this is the hops plant, and I should get to know them because maybe I can use these in my beer brewing. Here's one corner of the garden, community garden. All kinds of stuff going on, and you can see the gardens are in different growth states. People do different things. Let's go over and look at some specific raised beds I want to show you. Actually, I actually wanted to show you real quick. This is the gentleman's trellising system he has set up, in case you want some ideas. But this is how he grows all of his massive gourds right in this system. And in the winter, it looks chaotic and just all beat up. That's what I love about the community garden. And once it comes alive, it looks amazing. Look at all these gourds. Some people like to use black plastic. You can use that. Keeps the weeds down, gives you a planting area. Sometimes people say it helps keep the plants cleaner from disease and pests. Long rows of squash, zucchini, tomatoes in the cages on black plastic, on reflective plastic, or probably mylar. But all kinds of different examples of what you can do in your garden. Now I was talking about organic insect dusts are just as deadly as human-made chemical dust. They're all chemicals. This person's not using any, so they set up these row covers to cover their plants and keep the insects out. This is probably the only way you can say you're 100% chemical free when it comes to controlling insects. It's just don't let them get on there. Here's the other side of the community garden. It's just massive. I can't show it all to you today, but I'll show you other parts. Here are some of the raised beds I wanted to show you. People are using raised beds. I highly recommend it. You could even put them a little bit more closely together, but it allows you to concentrate all your resources into a specific space, saves you some money, makes maintenance pretty easy. Uh, in the sense, you can just drop down mulch or wood chips or whatever you have between the beds and it really cuts down on your weeding. Lots of squash and zucchini starting there. It's a good idea to have your crops planted at different times. Back there they must have started those three or four weeks ago and when they start dying out or become problematic these squash and zucchini right in the front will start taking over. More raised beds but more importantly somebody just started building and I wanted to show you what the build looks like and then we'll end this video but you can see the community garden is just huge. This plot was uh, transferred to a new owner this year and they started building raised beds. And this is a great example of what you can do. Looks like they're using regular pine or some wood. You can use pressure treated nowadays. It's not harmful to you. It's treated with copper, not arsenic. But it's just the build is really nice. So they're taking this space. They'll fill this up with their resources to have a great growing bed and they'll save themselves money and they'll probably mulch this area. When this is done, I'll show you, I'll give you an update of it. Hope you enjoyed the video in my community garden in this community area. 
please check out my seed shop at www.therestedgarden.com. Thanks.